All right, in this video, we're gonna go over some of the topics that you're gonna to need to understand in order to complete uh, your homework, especially uh, one of your problems. In particular, we're talking about a situation in which a parent or a subsidiary sells a piece of equipment to the other one, and at the end of the day, we need to eliminate those transactions in order to figure out what net income is. Now, couple things to understand here. The reason why we need to adjust net income, we are going to adjust the balance sheet account, so the assets and the accumulated depreciation, but one reason that we're going to have to adjust the net income account is because when the transaction happens, one of the companies booked either a gain or a loss. And by booking that gain or a loss, it's what we call an unrealized gain or loss. And because it's unrealized, we need to reverse it out at the end of the day. Now, before we talk about necessarily the reversal, um, we're gonna go through kind of the long explanation of what we're doing and then why are we doing the transactions that we're gonna be talking about. And then at the end of the day, this will help us understand the consolidated net income when inter entity transactions occur for the sale of equipment and other assets. And so let's talk about an example here. Let's assume that we've got um, Southwest who had a net income of $700,000, JetBlue who had a net income of $200,000. Now other information to understand is that we had excess acquisition of fair value expense of customer list for $8,000. So we can make up an example here, but let's say when we bought JetBlue, we also like their customer list. And so we bought JetBlue, let's say we, uh, JetBlue was worth $700,000. We decided to pay $900,000 for them. So we had an excess of fair value, purchase price over fair value of $200,000. Remember, we booked that $200,000 to Goodwill, or we assigned some of that $200,000 to uh, those equipment or those properties that are undervalued. In this case, customer list would not have been on JetBlue's um, in, uh, balance sheet, and so we um, are allocating, let's say in this case, $80,000 of this $200,000 to customer list. Well, we believe that customer list for whatever reason is good for 10 years, so we're going to expense that customer list for 10 years, $8,000 a year, okay? Again, this is just an example. We have this here so that you can understand the process of combining that income. Um, so we really don't care about this, but I wanted to give you an idea of how this $8,000 comes into play. Now, in addition, some information that we need to understand or know is that Southwest sold a $75,000 piece of equipment. It's on the books of Southwest for $75,000. It was previously purchased for 95. So it originally cost 95, but they've taken $20,000 of accumulated depreciation. That's why it sits at the book at $75,000. Now they sold it to JetBlue for $100,000. Not uncommon, you want to bring in money from your uh, subsidiary into your um, <clears throat> into the parent company, so you kind of sell it for more in this case than what you probably would have gotten. And so we basically sold a $75,000 piece of equipment for $100,000. So we have a $25,000 profit that Southwest is going to book. Now. What and, and so there are five more years left in life for this piece of equipment, and so um, that's what we have to contend here. Now, one thing that we didn't talk about, or one thing that this, is, this, this doesn't say, is that this, is, uh, this uh, transaction occurred in this period, okay? So in this period, that transaction occurred. Um, that makes a difference because then this whole problem would change if this is now a year later, okay? So what's the journal entries for that sale? What would have had been? And this is important just to understand from a basic level because we're gonna do some consolidated entries and then it's gonna be like, um, it, it will make more sense. So Southwest would have done <coughs> a debit to accumulated depreciation of 20,000. How do we get 20,000? Well, the difference between the book value and the, fit and the original cost was $20,000. So they must have depreciated it $20,000. Well, accumulated depreciation is normally a credit. If we wanna remove the accumulated depreciation, we would debit accumulated depreciation. In addition, cash, they would have received cash from JetBlue of $100,000. So we would have debited $100,000. 
Now, the other one that we know is we would have credited equipment for the original cost of $95,000. By crediting the equipment for $95,000, we eliminate the equipment. And once we eliminate the equipment, it's no longer on the books of Southwest Airlines. The plug is the gain. We have a gain of $25,000, which would make sense because we sold a $75,000 piece of equipment book value for $100,000. 100 minus 75 is $25,000, okay? So that's what Southwest would have put on their books. What about JetBlue? JetBlue would have debited equipment for $100,000 and credited cash for $100,000. Very simple, very simplistic uh, journal entry for JetBlue, a little bit more complex for Southwest. Now. <clears throat> Let's assume that we are consolidating. Well, we know from consolidations that, that we've always been talking about is we simply just add up um, all of our balances. So if uh, Southwest has $100,000 of equipment and JetBlue has $20,000 of equipment, we add them together and consolidate the total for equipment would be $120,000, okay? So that's what we would do. Now, I also wanted to give you some uh, T accounts to see what has happened consolidatedly. Well, there would be a gain of $25,000, okay? <coughs> 25,000. Equipment. Originally, there was $95,000, and we're assuming that there's no other equipment. We're just assuming this one equipment. There was an equipment for $95,000, but then we eliminated that, and then we added $100,000 from JetBlue, okay? So at the end of the day, there's $100,000 of equipment. Now, remember, when we're consolidating, we need to eliminate the transaction. So at the end of the day, we would eliminate the $100,000 transaction, and that equipment needs to come back to $95,000. Make sense? Okay. What about accumulated depreciation? Now, I don't have it up here, but originally, Accumulated depreciation would have been a credit of $20,000, but because of this entry, we would have removed accumulated depreciation of $20,000. So right now it stands at zero, okay? And then depreciation expense. Um, <coughs> depreciation expense, we would have, um, and we're not talking about this amortization expense, we're just talking about the depreciation expense or the uh, excess depreciation expense we would have taken. So where would what that excess depreciation would have been? Well, we would have already started depreciating the 75 the same way. Regardless if Southwest or JetBlue owns that equipment, they would have still they would still depreciate the $75,000 um, the rest of the five years the same way. However, because we took a step up basis, because that equipment went from 95 to 100,000, we now have $25,000 more of depreciable base. Why do we have $25,000 more of depreciable base? Well, the equipment used to sit at the books at 75. So we needed to depreciate. Let's assume that residual value is zero. So we still need to depreciate that 75,000 down to zero. But we're now depreciate, JetBlue is now depreciated as if the equipment was 100,000. Well, if we're gonna eliminate it, okay, we'll need to eliminate that excess depreciation. Well, what's the excess depreciation? The excess depreciation would have been the difference between what JetBlue has it on their books for and what um, Southwest should have had it on their books for. They should have had it at 75. The difference is $25,000, okay? 100 minus 75 equals 25,000. Now, we know that from here it says uh, there is five more years left. So if we divide it by five, we get $5,000. So we have this excess depreciation of $5,000. And it's not because we have more equipment, it's because of this intra-entity transaction that increased the basis of this equipment. And because it increased the basis of that equipment, we're now depreciating more. But remember, in an intra-entity transaction, we have to eliminate any intra-entity transaction. Well, what caused that extra $5,000 of depreciation expense? What caused it was the step up basis from an intra-entity transaction, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Now let's get to what we're trying to find and we're trying to find the combined net income. So Southwest and JetBlue, we could combine them. We would combine them at seven plus two, $900,000, okay? But we have to make some adjustments based on the information that we have here, because this should not be there. That Southwest $700,000 includes this $25,000 gain. Well, we've got to subtract that, 
okay? But before we subtract it, let's talk about the consolidation entries that we make when this happens, and they're right over here. So we've got our first one, which is consolidation entry TA. Now, consolidation entry TA's job is to remove the unrealized gain and restore the historical price of the asset. Okay, so the historical price of the asset we have to restore. Well, one of the things that we know off the bat is we've got to remove the gain. Well, if we know what the gain was, that's an easy. Well, you're going to debit gain of $25,000. And notice here, here's the gain. If we debit it, the gain is now zero. We don't have a gain anymore. Okay. Now, what does that do to this $900,000? Well, if we eliminate the gain, we need to drop it by $25,000. Now we're at 875, okay? We're not done yet, we still got this other one here. So we're gonna credit equipment for five, well, let's skip the equipment, let's go to accumulated depreciation. What's accum what was accumulated depreciation? Well, accumulated depreciation was pure, previously 20,000 and then we booked it out of here. So how do we restore accumulated depreciation? Well, accumulated depreciation is typically a credit. So when we credit the account, $20,000, we restore accumulated depreciation. Now again, just as a reminder, I'm making this as easy as possible. There would be more accumulated depreciation than this one thing. We're just using only this basis here, okay? So accumulated depreciation might be $100,000 because you have other equipment, other assets. Um, in this case, you don't see it here. We're just trying to be very focused in what you see here, okay? So that restores the accumulated depreciation. So what's left? What's left is the plug. Now the plug is gonna go back to equipment. Now, depending on the gain and depending on accumulated depreciation, this plug equipment could either be a debit or credit based on what's left. Well, we know that the gain on the sale of the equipment is $25,000. We know accumulated depreciation is 20. Our debits are 25, but our credits are 20. So in order to get those to balance, I need a credit of $5,000. So I'm gonna credit it $5,000. Now let's go back to equipment. If I credit here $5,000, what happens? Well, bigger minus smaller equals bigger, $95,000. I've restored Notice here, I've restored my equipment to its original price. It's now on the consolidated balance of $95,000, okay? So that's what we're doing with TA, was we're restoring the equipment's actual cost um, as if the inner and intra-entity transaction ever occurred, and we're restoring accounts, um, accumulated depreciation to what it was, and we're removing the gain, okay? Going on from there, <laughs> we have consolidation entry ED. Oh, nope, that's right. Consolidation entry ED. And consolidation entry ED is to eliminate the overstatement of depreciation expense. Now remember, we said that there's an overstatement. Why is there an overstatement? Because over here, we stepped up our basis. We stepped up our equipment from 75 to 100, which means there's $25,000 of extra basis, which means JetBlue is literally doing depreciation 25,000 more over the life of the um, asset and we need to remove that. We need to remove that because that's an artificial step up. It's step up because honestly, Southwest decided how much they were gonna sell it to JetBlue and because they're a parent and sub, Jet, uh, Southwest just said, hey, we're just gonna sell it to you for $100,000 even though it's probably only worth 65, okay? So this is an artificial step up. Well, what did we do? Well, <coughs> we originally had it at 75. It's now stepped up to 100, which means we have $25,000 more basis. We know that we're depreciating it over five more, year, five more years. So 25 divided by five is five. So we originally had a depreciation of $5,000 of extra. We now need to eliminate that, and to eliminate that, we use elimination ED. And so accumulated depreciation, we're going to remove a $5,000, and depreciation expense, it usually is a debit, we're not crediting it. We're crediting it because it brings it down, so it eliminates the expense, and if we eliminate the expense on this, notice depreciation expense, 5K, that is now zero. We have now eliminated the um, overstatement of depreciation expense, and accumulated depreciation, um, we're gonna credit debit 5,000. Now, 
Again, like I said, we're just trying to keep this simple. It's not that accumulated depreciation is now 15. There would have been a beginning balance because of the actual accumulated depreciation. So um, at the end of the day, I wouldn't worry about this 5,000 right here and why this is now 15 when it should have been 20. It's still 20. It's just when we original, when JetBlue originally did the depreciation on the $100,000 equipment, they would have overstated their accumulated depreciation by 5,000. Okay. Now, if we're going to eliminate the expense, what happens to net income? Okay. Well, net income is going to rise. So if it's going to rise, we're going to add back that $5,000. So now we're at 880. Okay. So what did we do? Well, we s subtracted $25,000 because we're taking away the gain. It's as if it never happened. We're going to add back the expense, this additional expense that shouldn't have happened because of the step up basis. And what do we have left? Well, we have this excess acquisition, um, excess acquisition of fair value expense. What do we do with it? Well, remember that this excess acquisition fair value expense does not show up on Southwest or JetBlue. It's a consolidation entry only. And because it's a consolidation entry only, we need to incur that expense. How do we incur that expense? We add, well, we subtract it from the net profit. So we subtract here $8,000 and now we get a consolidated balance of $872,000. So, you know, at the end of the day, what is our consolidated net income? Our consolidated net income is now $872,000. How do we get to 872? We added two together. That would have given us $900,000. We know we didn't have that gain. That was just an artificial gain, an unrealized gain. We subtract $25,000 from it. That gets us to 875. We had extra expenses that should have never been booked. So we're going to add back that expenses to 880. And then we have this excess acquisition fair value, which is a valid expense. And because it's a valid expense, we need to subtract it from our consolidated net income. By doing that, we get to 872. And that is our consolidated net income. Now, this doesn't help you solve the entire problem, but this... Um, this video is long enough. So this will give you an idea of how to calculate net income when we have an intra-entity transaction. And in particular, that intra-entity transaction is when, when one um, parent or sub sells to the other equipment, depreciable equipment. And so what we learned in this video that you haven't probably learned because we don't have another video is consolidation entry TA and consolidation ED. In the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about non-controlling interest in the same example. All right, so we'll see you then.